Hi everyone, it's January 25th and you are at the DEI working group meeting for chaos. I'm Elizabeth, the chaos community manager. Oh, I should also start captions. There we go. Um, we have a light group today, so um, maybe we'll get through our agenda pretty quickly. Um, let me just share. All right, I don't even have a question down here. Um, so maybe just say how you're doing, Elizabeth. I'm doing well. <laughs> we were supposed to get a ton of snow last night. And so all, the whole city, everyone's like shut down. All the schools are closed. Everything's shut down. And we didn't get hardly any snow. It all turned to rain. So, <laughs> so everyone gets the day off, except for those of us who work remotely. Um, but that's okay. I'm, I'm not a super fan of snow. So yeah, I'm happy to just have some rain and whatever. It's all good. Oh, let me drop a link to these minutes here in the chat. Because I did not do that. If I can find there we go. Hi, Mary Blessing. Good to see you. There's the agenda if anybody wants those. And if you want to drop your name in, that'd be great. Um, as I mentioned before, Sean, hi, Sean had a, um, a conflict today, something came up, so I volunteered to facilitate and he said he would do it next week. So I already put him down for next week. So, and he knows about that. Um, so let's go ahead and move on. Um, so we uh, have been talking about this onboarding team of uh, folks which is in the early planning stages, we're kind of thinking to call ourselves the tour guides um, and we would just help newcomers find their way. And here are the chaotics that are interested in participating so far. I'm glad that some of you are on this call because um, we did, I think we did talk about this in the community meeting and if I recall, it was pretty well received. Um, when, when should we start this? And like, what uh, what do we need to do? Like, what's our what's our task list before we can start it? And when when do you think we all should start this or launch this? If anybody has thoughts on that, if not, that's also valid. <laughs> that's also totally fine. If you're like, I don't know, whenever we want, <laughs> that's totally valid. Um. We could start it into the new month. I mean, <laughs> so it looks like we're getting into the new month with it. And um, before then, we like create a bit of um, outreach to get more persons to come in. So we have people to onboard, of course. So we do like a little outreach using Twitter handles or LinkedIn. And then get started. Should we wait we until, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm so sorry. No, it's fine. I was done. <laughs> okay. Um, I was just going to say, should we wait until after, I feel like the answer is going to be yes, but should we wait until after Chaos Con? Which is on February 3rd. Yeah, go for it, Delight. Yeah, I think we should wait after Chaos Con. When you're done with the events, then you know, implement it's a great idea. I think that, um, yeah, I like that idea. And also looking at the list of folks on here, um, I know Matt, Sean, well, Matt and Sean might be the only ones that are out for Chaos Con, but even still, um and then mary you had a question it says after the onboarding do we have a mentorship for these folks including myself so nothing officially no onboarding is going to just be very lightweight um like helping folks find documents or find like the teams of at chaos and just kind of helping them find their way right now we don't have anything more than that because i don't honestly i don't know if we have the we have the bandwidth to sustain that like more in-depth intense kind of mentorship stuff 
Is that what you were talking about? Tell me more about what you're what you're thinking. And you can type in the chat too, if you want. That's totally fine. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Elizabeth. Here's the um, agenda. Thank you. Today, we were just talking about our onboarding team and maybe like the plans for launching this. Um, we decided maybe we want to wait until after Chaos Con would probably be a good idea. Yeah, great, true. Um, here's the doc we had been working from, and since we do have uh, several of these folks on this call, um, what, so like what should be our plan? Like what would you all think we need to, like do we need to get something together in writing and document it more formally in the handbook or like what, what, how do you think we should roll this out? I would really love to hear some thoughts on actually like launching this and implementing it and rolling it out. I think, I think we should have something written out like you plan to have the expectation for what the, what's the, for the person on board then and for the own body, there's anything like that. <laughs> Yeah, like just it, it can be just a document to kind of like just set expectations. And you know, I also links to things, handy links that they would have. So in case um there's a question, you know, you know that this is my go-to doc to find all those handy links, and I don't have to glance that section for those links every time. Excellent idea. And then Anita also mentioned doing um, some outreach on LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, just to let folks know that's a thing that we have. We might, we might want to hold on a little bit on outreach until we have like, let's see how it's going because we don't want to also have like an influx that might overwhelm the people. So that's just, Keep it on a low four and see how it's going in the next couple of weeks or months. And then we can, you know, make that announcement. So we just know how it's going. Do the people that are currently onboarding, do they need help? Is it overwhelming? You know? Yeah, that's an excellent point. Um, we may want to like make sure the process is smooth and flawless and that we all feel comfortable we know what to do when we get a request and we kind of have that process smooth, smoothed out a little. Um, that's yep. a good, good point. Yep, yep. Do we need any kind of uh, like orientation or like, I don't know. I mean, Mary said it in here. Um, people should already have some sort of idea what we do here and able to guide others through it. So I don't know that we need like an official kind of like, I don't know, training or anything like that. I don't, I, I don't think I'm we guessing the, 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 um, the people on board would not just be, they won't maybe up to what, what would be the, or what is currently the, I would I call it requirements to be in the onboarding team, right? Like if it's say, for example, you have to one year in chaos, then we know that, um, you know, so the person has like that knowledge about chaos already and it's just supporting like, and having that documentation that like with handy links, because even me right here, there's some things I can't find. <laughs> Yeah, no, same. Where, where, I, where I have to like ask you these, where is it, right? I was looking for the logos yesterday, I think, and I was like, where are they again? Like I couldn't find them. So yeah, no, I totally get it. Um, So we, we put in some, um, just uh, like in this working doc, uh, dropped in some criteria to be a tour guide. Um, mm -hmm. So have a good working knowledge, be okay pair, getting paired with a stranger that you don't know. Um, make sure you know the code of conduct and that you're um, added, we add you to this Slack channel. 
um, which I think I added everybody who was on that team to that private channel. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I think, you know what, I don't know, like, so what we can do for this piece right here, the written docs, um, it would basically just be taking this working doc and like making it look nice and um, maybe make, breaking it into two docs, one for the onboarding team and one for the newcomers that we would be onboarding and then yeah. putting them out on the handbook. So do, if there's anybody who wants to take that action item, uh, feel free to we, jump we in. We can also put up an issue, like create an issue too, which reminds me that I have to create an issue. <laughs> Yeah, would we prefer to, I, I, I would prefer, my personal preference is to have someone on the onboarding team do this work with oh, the yeah. docs. True. Um, just because they're going to be familiar with like our conversations around it and stuff like that, and they can fill in any blanks. Um, but I can certainly, uh, or I could, I could open an issue and drop it in the channel, in the Slack channel, or like the tour guide. Yeah, you can do that as well so that anybody, I don't think everyone is here. But yeah. Okay. okay. Sure. So let's see. Action item for Elizabeth. Open issue for the doc creation and put it in the tour guide channel. And then if nobody speaks up, I'm happy to do it. I just want to give others opportunities to jump in if they want. Um, any questions about any of this tour guide stuff? I don't have any questions. Okay. All right. What doc are we talking about? Uh, we were just talking about taking this kind of working doc that we were just dropping notes in and it's a little bit disorganized and it has, <laughs> it has our pictures in there um, and like all of our extra names that we don't need to keep around um taking this doc and breaking it into two separate docs that would be like front facing to put in our handbook so like one would be for the tour guides and one would be for those who are new maybe on like what this program is and how to access this group and things like that oh we should also have um a way for them to ask for a uh a tour guide because we don't we did not do that part <laughs> so <laughs> would we uh like would like a document um a form oh, no. i don't know I, I, I think i think if sorry i think if i if we can be able to add it on the um slack box so whenever they click on new p they oh, have yeah, a session that's very good idea Yes, that was that I think yes I, I remember that conversation, I think the problem is we don't have anybody that wants to do that right away. So like in the meantime, do we want like, to when you say do that, what do you mean like add that to the slack bot because I think we do we, we can create an issue and someone can fix it that's I think that's not so much of a problem. I think we yeah we can create an issue I can speak with pressures. Uh, Usually. With fixing things on the Slack, but that's how we've been working. Like create an issue, anybody picks it up, and kind of like there's a detail. Like we're putting enough context into the issue that okay, this is what. So I opened an issue last week, um, and I just didn't see much traction on that. So if okay. somebody wants, okay. I think something you can do is when you open the issue, you can drop it on the new command channel because like that's what. Um, precious and I usually does like we just we just drop it we, once we open like an issue so that people are able to see it we either drop it on the new format channel or the chaos Africa channel any of them and then okay. people can just pick it up so okay yeah, perfect I think we even need I, I see that uh out the the label for outreach is getting picked out by the bots <laughs> yeah yeah I yeah. saw that. I texted me the to help fix it. <laughs> um, okay, so wait, I did this actually. Oh no, I didn't do that. Um, so uh, drop. Let me just put it up here. Also drop a link to the other issue in the comments. Okay. Oops. Okay. Perfect. 
Um, okay, so that kind of is a great segue into the mentorship programs for 2023. Um, I just wanted to bring this up because we have been already getting a lot of questions about um, Outreachy, Google Summer Code, and all of those. So um, just to let this group know, we are not participating in Outreachy this year um, for a couple of reasons, mainly um, well, for one, I don't know that we have the budget allocated for that because Outreachy is a program where um, projects pay directly, um, as opposed to Google Summer of Code where Google pays our students. Um, so I don't know that we had the budget allocated. And then this, and then secondly, last year we were um, inundated, <laughs> to put it lightly, inundated with um, new folks to the community, which was amazing, and it's. It was partially, uh, well, a, a, a large part um, from the outreachy folks and all of the hard work that they had done to get the word out about these mentorships. Um, so kudos to them. They did a fantastic job. They almost did too good of a job <laughs> as we immediately, like we got like hundreds of new folks to chaos um, and it was absolutely overwhelming for, for those of us who are trying to like guide people and give them answers and point them in the right direction. And it, it just felt like it wasn't the best experience for the newcomers um, because we were not able to really handle that level of, of incoming folks. So um, we decided to just take a break from Outreachy this year. Maybe we'll do it again next year. I don't know, but um, for now, we're just gonna take a break on that. Um, and then I'll just stop there. Any questions about that? No, I don't have any questions. And then um, regarding Google Summer of Code, I think we are going to participate, um, but the our level of participation, we are also going to scale way back. Um, we've we've always done a lot <laughs> with Google Summer of Code, like we're talking like eight, 10, 12 students. Um, and this year we're scaling way, way, way back. Um, just again, to kind of provide that level of like there, uh, we, we want to make sure we're providing them with like an exemplary experience uh, and, and that they are getting the attention and the interaction and engagement that they deserve. And it felt like a little bit last year that we were spreading ourselves a little thin. Um, so mm -hmm. we just want to kind of re like reset. And so we're going to we are going to do a few projects, um, but it's going to be scaled way back. So maybe only a few. Yes, delay, go for it. Oh, I'm sorry, but I just stepped out a little bit, but when I'm coming back, I heard of you saying I missed an interview yesterday. Um, say that one more time about the interview. Yeah, you said I missed an interview yesterday. Oh, okay, with Anita? Yeah, I, I heard of something like that, I don't know. I um, stepped out of it, so I was just so coming back. I was talking about um, outreach in, like internships. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what it was talking about. I don't know if maybe Delight had heard wrongly, but do you have sorry, a, sorry. do you have a meeting with Anita, like an interview? No, except no, no, no. you have. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I was that, yeah. Okay. So yeah. maybe Elizabeth, you want to maybe talk about internships one, one more time? Sure, I see, I see. Yes. Um, so in a, in a nutshell, um, we're scaling way back uh, just to make sure that we are um, able to provide the level of engagement and attention to our students that they deserve. Um, not that they, we, we weren't able to do that last year, it just felt uh, um, like we were kind of stretching ourselves kind of thin. So we just want to scale back. And this year we're not going to participate in Outreachy. Um, and our Google Summer of Code, we are scaling way, way, way back and only doing maybe a few projects. So that was just essentially what I was going to mention. Um, something that has not been discussed yet is the She Code Africa. So I yeah. want to also bring that up. Is that coming back around? What's, what do you know, Ruth? Um, I, I hope it, it should. Yes, it should. But I, I need to connect back with the point of contact, Zainab on their plans this year but it should come back this year and uh, hopefully chaos will participate 
I, I feel like uh, of the mentorship programs that we participate in, honestly, like She Code Africa was so easy for, for chaos to participate in um, because they took care of like all of the the overhead and like the pre-work, which is where the burden like usually falls on the project. So um, they do all the vetting, they do all the assigning of mentors or sorry, mentees to the projects. So for as far as I'm concerned, from from a chaos standpoint and from our own like set of resources here, that is a no brainer. I think we absolutely should do it again. Yeah, it was wonderful. Awesome. It would be lovely. And I think I think something I wanted to mention, you know, as regards internships, um, I, I think I was having this conversation with Enoch um, some minutes, um, I think an hour ago. And and by the way, Enoch is Enoch is going to come into your DM soon because I think he's getting so many DMs. <laughs> and, and they're saying they are from Elizabeth. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have been getting a lot. And and like that's that's kind of the way it goes like with mentorship programs. It's not just like the mentorship itself, which is, you know, it takes a lot of time from both mentors and mentees obviously for, you know, for obvious reasons, but it's mm -hmm. all this time leading up to that is yeah. I mean, like my DMs are full and will continue to be full and will probably get fuller as soon as they um announce that we are participating if we you know we because we still have to do it we we still have to apply so it's not a guaranteed really that we're in guessing yeah. we will be in because we've done it you know i don't know six years in a row now five years in a row, i don't know um but so people are anticipating that so they're trying to you know like be part of the community kind of ahead of the game and um which is yeah great. like that's fine totally get that but like <laughs> It's a lot <laughs> on those of us who, um, you know, uh, field all of these questions and field these um, inquiries. So, yeah. Just just before I say what I want to say, I I think I think I I I say laughing like you, and I see where I get it from because Enoch was like, "Why did I start laughing like this? How did I?" And you just did it right. <laughs> I finally see where I got it. Um, but, but sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know that. <laughs> yeah, but, but so the conversation I had with Enoch was this, right? And and um, I I think forgive me, I'm going to do a, a bit of a comparison, right? Um, so for the internships, like with GSOC and Outreachy, and then let's say she could Africa internships, and you know, you also talked about how um on she could Africa they can like handle all that overhead. So now something I have noticed is that a lot a lot of the students that we have from GSOC, um, they do not like a lot of them, I don't even know them. All right. Like if you can ask if you ask me who were the um mentees for last year's GSOC, I can only say Enoch, all right, because <laughs> that's the only person I know. And I, I think to some extent, um, and, and the, there are different moving parts, right? Some sometimes it has to be like the mentees have to want to dedicate to becoming part of the community, right? There's there's also them trying to be part of the community, and I think there's also some things we can do as an organization as well. Um, you know, trying to connect the mentees to 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 chaos, the chaos community, right? Um, trying to maybe put in a requirement that they should attend the meetings because, for example, for Enoch, um, you know, he was working on the badging bot and, you know, we, we usually had those updates, um, you know, at every badging meeting, Enoch would try to make that meeting to kind of like keep us in the loop on what he was working on during his, his GSOC internship. Now, in the case of the other interns, I always remember that you are the one like, you know, giving that update on some of the updates, the ones that you can get in the weekly calls. So if we have, if we kind of like encourage the mentees we select to be part of the community, because I feel that we are losing, we are losing a lot of like the mentees that come to work on this project. And also do not take away the fact that it has to be their own you know they have to really want to participate too right but we can also um prompt them or encourage them to participate in the community right 
um I, I feel we are losing a lot of a lot of them and then before pre pre internship like you know it's it's um I think it's inevitable sometimes like getting that influx of people because a lot of people are interested a lot of people want to participate in the internship they want to know what they want to be ahead like like you said like they want to be ahead of you know um the timeline and we we really cannot help that part um but yeah like but I, I feel the when the internship starts there are some things that we can put in place to kind of help at least the mentees that we eventually choose right to be part of the community and also something I would also love to say is maybe when choosing like during the choosing phase we also pick those people that are you know some people that also have that community sense in them as well I think this is also some requirements from the internship organizers you know saying okay you have to also be part of the community so those are the like little things that I noticed that I wanted to also point out uh, yeah, 100% agree. And I think that that is maybe another reason um, that we kind of do want to scale back is that we would rather have folks that um, do want to be in the community and not necessarily just write the code like that to yeah. us to chaos like that's a little more, I shouldn't say more, uh, better, but like maybe more meaningful. Um, mm -hmm. as an ex for an experience from both sides, you know, it's definitely more meaningful to work with someone that is, you know, a, a little more engaged. Um, yeah. And I would also yeah. say like Google changed their criteria for participation last year. Um, mm -hmm. They opened it up to non-students. So we did yeah, have a few true. that were not students that also had a full-time job. And that oh, really yeah. affected true. their level of engagement because of their limited time. So mm -hmm. it was you know, I'm personally, I'm not a fan of that change, but I know it's to try to make it a little more inclusive because not everybody can just afford to be a student here. Yeah, exactly. not work, you know, and just rely on this Google money um, eventually coming in. So um, I, I get why it just um, maybe did not have the best effect for our situation. So, um, so I think, right. that, yeah, like to your point, Ruth, like requiring um, a little more uh, community commitment. Um, and I think Sean also mentioned um, requiring um, more of um, like that you have require what how did he say it something like you you confirm uh, that you have time to do this, <laughs> essentially, yeah. and that you're not yeah. gonna like, you know, yeah. Thinking about this, I, I think this is a topic we can bring up in DI audits um meetings because I feel that there there are a lot more that um since this is being recorded, like there are a lot more we can analyze like on that meeting. And for people that um do not know like what the do, so there's a DI audit team that kind of like audits um the work that chaos. Um, you know, it's doing, it's a team funded by the Fox Foundation. We've been doing the work for over two years. So kind of like auditing um, our DI effort team here. So I think this is a conversation that we can, you know, talk about in the DI audit team. Because if you look at it, there are a lot of, there are a lot of things that, you know, would cost this, right? Like a lot of them. Maybe we can bring up that conversation there and see. Since we are taking a step back this year, it will be great to kind of like know the way forward and how to think that thing will be best to give recommendations. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, we kind of need to just like, like reset and, and figure out, like, like you just said, the path forward from here. Um, Cause it was a little bit much last year. So. Yeah. Um, okay, we have a little bit of time left. Um, do we want to talk about this group's goals for 2023? Uh, I know a few other working groups have put together some goals, um, just, you know, nothing major, just kind of like what things we think we want to focus on for the year. Hmm. The only thing at the top of my head right now is the survey. 
Um, I think the, the survey that Anita is doing, and then I think it will turn into a, a paper. I don't know if there are plans to have that as a paper. I know at the initial points, people were interested in having it as a paper. Look at that. More metrics. <laughs> Yeah, this was kind of my uh, thing here, because we have a lot of ideas and some that are in progress that kind of we just forgot about or just didn't get to. So <laughs> I was going to bring it um, back up here. So the so, thing then metric models, um, you know, developing, I think, collaborating with the metric model group to kind of like, yeah, develop metric models for DI. Do we have anyone yet? Like, I know, I know the the metric model group has been working on some models, but I don't know if there's any for DI yet. Uh, I usually try to make those um, meetings. Is that your question? <laughs> do we have anybody that's no, crossing? Like, the question is, um, how do we have? Like, I know the metric models working group have been like creating some models. Do we have any for? Is there any for DI currently? Oh. Sorry, yeah. Um, I think the only one that's specific to DEI is they um, released the DEI event badging metric model, which is essentially just like the metrics that we use for the badging. Um, yeah, I think that's the only one. There's actually, let's look. There's a few uh, ideas that right. were like um, community fatigue, community <laughs> safety, um, welcomingness. So, that one. <laughs> yeah, there's some in progress for sure. Um, some of these say ready, they're not ready. <laughs> Community safety is, is an example. Um, and that's something maybe we can help out with, actually. There's um, a few that are like this looked different. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK, this was uh, on my on the agenda for the next metrics models meeting, actually, is like this was an old template. And that, and that question is who attends those? I've never been the one. <laughs> who are yeah. the people in that meeting? Who are the regular? <laughs> Just a curious question. Because I've never been the one. Who who are the regulars in that meeting? Is that your question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah, it's usually myself and Matt, sometimes Sean. Yeah, Sean. Um Yahui from the uh, Chaos Asia Pacific. Okay. Um, a few uh Jun from Chaos Asia Pacific, Yang. Uh, sometimes Shoya, and then sometimes we have other folks drop in that are maybe from OSPOs or from other different various roles, because um, they're really, to, to, to date, there really hasn't been another place for them to kind of interact, and metrics models is of interest to them. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a weird time. It's like 7 p.m. for me, so it's really not oh, very, very accessible. Like I think that was like 12 years. Yeah. And I think we did that because all of the the Chaos Asia Pacific meetings, like they could never attend anything because of the because we're all kind of more geared towards like the US okay. time zones, which kind of sucks. Okay. So this we kind of shifted for them. So for them it's actually the morning of the day after. Um mm -hmm. Because Shanghai is 12 hours, I think, different for me. So for them, it's like 7 in the morning the next day, <laughs> Wednesday morning and 7 p.m. Tuesday night for me. So wow. it's a little bit better for them. But yeah, it's not great for Europeans and Africans and um, anyone else around. Yeah, it's also for me, like waking up 7 a.m. for a meeting I would. <laughs> you what? Say that again? Like, like. For them, it's 7 a.m. I wouldn't wake up 7 a.m. for a meeting. <laughs> yeah. Same, same, same. I'm like, that would be way too early. Yeah. But they're they're very dedicated. <laughs> so, and yeah, like, Yahoo's already at work. Like, he's sitting at his desk. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> no, no, go home. No. <laughs> yeah, they're they are so great though. That's it's it's been really awesome being able to connect with them in that in that meeting. So Mm -hmm. um but yeah so anyway i forgot what we were talking about but yeah uh, 
uh goals <laughs> yeah goals that's right I, I think i thought of something right now um so the survey we we run um the survey from the di the community survey i think implementing you know that feedback from the survey can be another one because there are a lot of insight in that survey so yeah, and for, for those who don't know um, or have forgotten, back in October, we ran a survey um, from the in in collaboration with our DEI audit team that Ruth is talking about earlier. Um, we're still in the process of going through those results, um, but we are going to actually blog and release the, that survey questionnaire to whoever else wants to run it in their own open source communities. So there's that. Um, but we're assuming that from those results, we will get some recommendations or come up with some recommendations with the DEI audit team. And you're right, um, Ruth, this would probably be the, the group that would focus on figuring out how to implement those within chaos. So perfect. Mm -hmm. Great goal. Anybody else have anything that's been on their mind or something they think that would be important for this group to focus on in the coming year? chapter <laughs> a new chapter in another region i don't know australia yeah That's australia cool. is another time zone entirely too right yeah i think they're 15 hours ahead of me well it depends on where in australia but and then some of some of them are like half an hour so it's like 15 and a half hours away. <laughs> so like talk about talk about a nightmare trying to figure out what yeah. time anything is like, like more in like, 30 minute chunk. Find, like, find out Australian co open source communities. Like, where are they? Where do you find them? I tell you what, Linux Linux has a really big uh, open yeah, source yeah, community right. in Australia. There's a huge one. Maybe maybe it would be maybe trying to find out one of those communities and giving a talk about chaos there. I volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> I have always wanted to go to Australia. I don't know though. Like thinking about the flight over there from Ohio, yeah, I feel like that would be a lot. I don't know if my yeah, own bones can take it. Well, I think things are done. I, I meant virtually, actually. So. Oh, <laughs> virtually. Oh, yeah, that's not as fun, but yes, hundred <laughs> yeah. uh, percent. And and then I think I think something I also wanted to bring up is um so. For Asia Pacific, because we, we, we get a lot of Indians coming to the project, right? So uh, how do I say this? For Asia Pacific, um how and I know there was a time where um the decision was running to meetings in Chinese or things. So now um for Say for example, we point an Indian to that meeting. And uh, you know what that's happened? an excellent, excellent point. Um, and to be fair, I know, I know Matt and Shoya have talked in the past about making Asia Pacific uh, less China centric and more open because also Japan, you know, like, I mean, there are obviously um, many other countries in that region. So um, I honestly don't know uh, what that where that landed, to be perfectly honest, I don't really know. So maybe we um, um, because I, I see like, um, for example, um, somebody put a blog post about my my um talk at mozilla which is a lot of dedication right which i'm i'm supposed to that reminds me i'm supposed to look at and give feedback on the blog post and um that person is indian right so you know we we get a lot of like indian attracted to the project and sometimes it's it would be great to kind of point them to you know Asia Pacific, yeah, but but then um I know the regular the decision to have the meetings in Chinese was because like the regular 
people like people that are attending the meetings are um you know based in China and that's that 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 works for them. So we might want to think about how to you know, do that. Are we going to break in like break Asia Pacific into like two? Like okay. Or it depends, we can look for something. But but another thing is we we also need to get someone like use the word dedicated before we can make that decision. Like for example, like Jurea was there, Jurea is interested. Right. So I think this is for the future, but something we can also put in our goals. Totally a hundred percent agree with everything that you just said. So plus one to all of that. <laughs> Cause I think, yeah, that is maybe a gap um, that we have. And, and we do have a lot of folks that come in from these regions. So yeah, excellent. Can you add Australia there, like expanding to new regions, like add Australia, not like we have anybody from Australia, but want to, we want to have them. And I think like, um, like South America, we don't have yeah, Latin or America. Latin America, South Central America. Yeah. We should go off. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. That's a lot of goals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is great. And funding the um, community to this continent out. Yeah, we're, we're, we're very, very nice. At least we have more flux from different parts of the world. And I think you have more ideas that will help to expand chaos to a greater height. Yeah, so maybe we... Awesome, to So, should I start? Oh, go ahead. I, no, I just said we are awesome too, so we should expand. <laughs> I think too that um, the success of Chaos Africa has been um, due to you, Ruth, and your dedication and your enthusiasm and your um, awesome welcomingness to those folks, um, which then you know, um, filters down. And so now there's like a whole larger group of, of Ruth's <laughs> that help, help, you know, bring newcomers on and um, tell them where, how to find things and just very open and welcoming. And you've, you've kind of cultivated that, um, mm -hmm. that experience for others too. And so like, if we had folks in those other regions that could also yeah, sure. do that, um, then I think that would would be the key, really. Yeah, so very true. Cause like, um, you know, if we have somebody dedicated that wants to take on that leadership, like, great. do we? Yeah, do we? Uh, do you think we need like a chaos Europe, or do you think that they're okay? Yeah. Kind of. It, it's kind of tricky, because like um, chaos they like with both like. Europeans and you know North Americans like involved. So and and then not like the time zone, the time zone is different too, but it's it's tricky because um I, I think um the Europeans we have um they uh, let me not use this word they're not um so active let me not use that word but say like is there someone too that can connect everybody in the europe era like together right so that's i think the the a lot of the folks that are that the familiar faces in chaos are in north america so yeah, I'm just thinking too, like open source in general in Europe is not quite as um, like, I think people in Europe have more access, I will say that um, mm -hmm. to open source to, you know what I mean? So I don't know that, it, I don't know that we need that. I don't know. 
don't know. Yeah, I it, have it, feelings it, about it. We we can do like a a count and see do we how many people show up in meetings that are or you know that are in the Europe era. Yeah. Agreed. Maybe I'm trying to solve a problem we don't have. <laughs> Which is possible. It happens. I do that a lot. I make things harder than they need to be. <laughs> um, and I'm looking at the time now. We're almost out of time. Um, we do have some metrics here on our tab that are we're in progress that we maybe didn't finish. So maybe for next time we can kind of look at this spreadsheet again and just see if there's any of these like ideas or ones that were in progress, if we well, can start working on where. Yeah, if we can bring them to fruition. Why is the society that can you scroll down? Yeah. The one um scroll keep scrolling. Scroll, scroll. Yeah, scroll. the societal value, all of them are just considering. <laughs> yeah, and I, that is because they all came from the value working group that is now oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. group. So they just okay. they shifted to us. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, we haven't really had a chance to think about any of those as a group. Um, they're just kind of dropped in there as ideas that were the value and now there are ideas. So because these are really hard <laughs> to measure, like what, how, how, I mean, so these, these will take a little more thought. And that's, I think one reason why, at least from the conversations I was in, in value, um, when you get to these kinds of things, it's, it's really hard to, uh, like, put on paper how you would measure this. So, yeah. But if anybody has thoughts on any of this, I'll drop a link to them. Um, well, it's in our minutes, but here it is in chat too. If anybody wants to poke around, awesome. If not, that's also fine. It's also good, it's whatever. Okay, well, I think that's it for today. I hope everybody has a great rest of your day, evening, week. Yeah, it's the end of my day, so. Yeah. Now it's time to relax. Maybe I should join you and just relax. <laughs> Take the rest of the day off. It's all good. <laughs> you have it all to do. No. Mary Blessing says I should, so maybe I will. No, I'm just kidding, I won't, but um, yeah. Anyway, I hope everybody has a good one and I will see you here next time, next week, same place. All right, yeah. everybody. Bye, Elizabeth. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Okay.